Whoa! Hi there, it's Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet. For the last little while, I've been using this, the 7970, as my main graphics card, and it has not been so pretty, mostly because I video edit, and there's some stuff missing from this that uh, the current generation lacks for sure. Uh, but as most of you know, I sold my RX 480 for an extreme profit and uh, actually went from uh, buying it for 200 uh, just six months ago to selling it for 480 Canadian dollars. So making a substantial profit. But all along, I did have a plan in mind to find the best deal possible. And a lot of you chimed in and uh, wanted me to buy a 1080. And I was hoping to buy one of those, but the mining crazes really made it so there aren't very many good deals to be had. So when this popped up on Kijiji for four or $550, it piqued my interest. And I actually talked the guy down I don't know what he was thinking, he was just looking to upgrade or whatever, to 450 Canadian dollars. So I essentially made a $30 profit on my RX 480 to exchange it for a GTX 1070, a card that is probably about 20, 25% faster. So what am I going to do with this thing? Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ruin it. I have a build up coming and I want to paint this card. Um, I also want to put this on it. This is the Accelero Twin Turbo 2. And my friends over at Arctic Cooling sent this over to me to put on my RX 480. And I would have done it. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of glad I didn't. But what happened was this actually got lost between Sweden or wherever Arctic's from and here. And uh, about a month and a half into them saying they were sending me this stuff, it shows up at my door. I didn't think it was coming. So I thought, what am I gonna do with it? How am I gonna, you know, use it? It's meant kind of for a lower TDP card. Well, it turns out that even though these GPUs are very evenly sized, the 1070 is a very low powered card. It's like 175 watts max, and this will do up to 250. So we are going to ruin this thing by painting some parts of it and by sticking this accelero on it if possible. And we're going to turn it into an, a beast of a card, an overclocking machine. I've already grabbed some benchmarks, some thermals from the Founders Edition card here. And hopefully I don't screw it up too bad. And you know, maybe I'll, uh, at least if it works in the end, I'll be pretty happy. But hopefully we can even get higher overclocks with lower thermals and lower, uh, lower audio coming from this. We're also going to be switching out the old aluminum coffin there, the, uh, the Ryzen case for something new in the very new future. So, uh, cue an intro. We're going to talk or we're going to start working on this and we're going to do all about it.
Hi there, guys. I know what you're thinking. This is the ugliest graphics card there ever was. And you know what? I don't care, okay? Uh, I don't think that the Accelero was very well, you know, designed for the looks of it. And all I was doing was looking to make it white because I'm going to be rebuilding my Ryzen computer into a white build. Uh, and I wanted RGB and the reflective nature of white. So uh, here you go. The back plate is white and ugly. Uh, it's the TJ, the Timmy Joe 1070 edition. Uh, but what really counts here is the results. And I'm extremely ecstatic to report that this cooler is amazing. I, I can't even explain. I mean, if you had the three fan version of this on a, you know, like a 7970 uh, th uh, R9 390X, something like that, it would be amazing. I don't know what Arctic's doing. Uh, well, I do know. They've got basically a CPU cooler on the freaking thing. And it's 20 Celsius better than the stock blower cooler at the same overclocks really at all at, at idle at it's just so much better and the best part is is even at like 80 percent fan speed on this freaking thing it's it's like a quarter if not 20 percent of the noise of the stock cooler it's one of the quietest cards i've ever heard really especially at load it's amazing um so uh what i did was i checked to see how far we could push an overclock and with gpu boast 3.0 uh, really you can get max overclock uh, you know with a blower style cooler it's just gonna be super loud and I was getting over two gigahertz with this uh, 500 plus on the memory with the stock cooler and that didn't change much with this but what did change was uh, at those loads I was well over 80 degrees with the blower cooler this thing sits from 60 to 65, full tilt, full bore in superposition or in Unigen Valley, uh, you know, settings cranked after several, you know, runs through. And uh, I'm able to get just that much more of an overclock uh, because, you know, there's voltage regulations and you hit those even with the, the stock cooler with one of these uh, uh, Pascal based GPUs. It's just kind of the way it is. But uh, especially with the reference cards, apparently they're not very well built uh, in comparison. Even though they're more expensive and they have a premium, the PCBs aren't as good as some of the uh, the, the off bearing men, like MSIs and the uh, gigabytes and what have you. But uh, in the end, uh, 60 degrees at full bore, full tilt, over to 275, 2075 megahertz on the uh, GPU core, and uh, 4400 or whatever 40 or 8800 on the memory so like just I'm smoke this is the smokingest video card I've ever owned and I've, I've tested a 1070 before and I was like super ecstatic then that it was really good it was that much better than the RX 40 and the RX 40 was a pretty damn good card I had no complaints about it but with this I, what I'll tell you right now the games, yes, it runs like anything 1080p or some 1440p at 60 frames a second or, you know, way beyond. But what I really loved with this graphics card mwah, is the video editing. It's, it's a 1070 or a 1080 or a 1080 Ti. Like, NVIDIA is in a class on their own right now, and until we see the results of Vega, they've really done a good job uh, at, you know, keeping a really good product out. Now, it's expensive, yes, but, you know, maybe this AMD competition will bring this stuff down, and maybe Vega will bring this type of performance at, like, you know, $400 American or $300 American or something like that. But uh, right now, I'm really ecstatic at the deal I got. And as ugly as the freaking thing is, the Timmy Joe 1070 will forever be in my heart one of my favorite graphics cards. And I've only owned it for a few days now. So what do you guys think? Did I butcher a freaking 1070? Did, was this even worth it? Well, I think it was because... The 20 degree difference is just amazing, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. There will be a lot more content coming. I'm sorry I'm a little slow this week getting it out, but uh, I have a white build coming up. I have, 
an AIO coming uh, for review. I've got a load of older stuff that I've been working on, just trying to get working uh, for some reviews. But I still have a contest. I hope you guys will subscribe. 10,000 subscribers. I'm going to give away a, a Ryzen uh, motherboard, CPU, and RAM. So check out the contest at the end of the video. Subscribe if you thought this content was fun. And if you didn't, I don't give a fuck because I got me a sweet 1070 and I freaking love it. So you guys have yourselves a nice day. I'm Penny Joe and I'll see you in the next video. Gah!